this. Right. Right. <clears throat> thank you for the introduction and thank you for the opportunity to present our work. So, as you know, optical quantum technologies rely on the detection of, uh, of single photons. So, for example, if we look at uh, QKD, QKD puts really demanding constraints on the detectors that are used. Because you need high efficiency in order to reduce the losses in your communication. You want to have a detector with a low recovery time to support a fast key exchange. And you also want a low level of noise so you can uh, extend the distance of your communication. And you want to do that, all of that, with, while having a detector with a low jitter so you can reduce the errors that you get in your communication. Um, moreover, other applications in quantum technologies also require a feature that's called uh, a photon number resolution. So you want to know at a, at a certain time how many photons are arriving on your single photon detectors. This could be interesting in applications where basically you want to create a stream of true single photons and you want to filter out the multi-photon pairs that might be produced by some sources. It's extremely relevant in optical quantum computing where at the end of your computation, you need to, de to determine the photon number state that's at the end of your uh, computation. And it can also be, they can also be used in quantum metrology to assess the purity of single photon sources or study exotic systems. And uh, we believe that uh, SNSPDs can tick, tick all these boxes. They can achieve more or less all these performances. And they've been around already for a few years. They've had a real impact in many applications. And today I will focus on, uh, on these three and showing you the results of our work, uh, pushing the limits of, an SNS, of SNSPDs uh, in these uh, applications. So in the most basic implementation, a single pixel SNSPD, it's a really long meander of superconducting material to which we can efficiently couple light. And uh, then uh, what we need to do is to bias the detector with a certain current. This can be very easily achieved by using uh, a biasing circuit like this. And then uh, once uh, I am able to flow a current in the detector, which is close to its critical current, then I can achieve a uh, single photon detection. So the absorption of a single photon is enough to disrupt the superconductivity in the nanowire, cause the entire nanowire to switch resistive, and cause and produce a output voltage at the output of our readout. This is basically the current that was flowing in the detector that gets shunted to the readout once there is a switching here and the nanowire becomes resistive. Um, after this, the process can uh, restart. The nanowire needs a little bit of time to cool down and be ready to restart the process and absorb a new single photons. So SNSPDs have achieved really, really impressive performances, especially uh, even at telecommunication wavelengths, with really high system detection efficiency, very low noise floor, and really good jitter. What they are still maybe missing a little bit is the ability to operate at really high detection rates. And this is because of the considerable recovery time that you need to allow the detector to have after a single photon detection. And moreover, in their simple implementation as single pixels, they lack the, they are very limited in their ability to detect, to resolve photon numbers. So we are looking at two approaches in order to enable photon number resolution with SNSPDs and also improve their detection speed. And the idea is basically the same. We want to divide the detection areas in multiple small SNSPDs, which we'll refer to as pixels. So this will allow us to have uh, a faster detector and by looking at the counts on, all, on the pixels to achieve information on the photon number resolution. The first way that we do this is with these detectors, which are parallel SNSPDs, where these pixels that are created are then connected in parallel and read out with a single line at the exit of your cryostat. Then you will have a pulse where the amplitude it encodes how many photons were arriving on the detector at one single time. So you can set your threshold discriminator at different threshold that you will know if this threshold is uh, um, surpassed, it will be one of these multi-photons. You can subtract the counts and you can retrieve the number of photons that were on your detectors. 
So these detectors also allow to go much faster than a conventional single pixel SNSPDs, but they're still limited because all the signals have to, uh, have to travel on the same cable. So the second architecture that we are working on is multi-pixel SNSPDs, where now these pixels are independent. So they are read out individually, they're biased and read out individually. And this allows us to push the, the detection rate above one gigahertz. They allow us to work, to understand the number, the photon number on any light that is incoming on the detector. And as you will see, then the number of photon is not anymore encoded in this amplitude, but in the amount of, in the number of pixels that actually clicked. So in this presentation, I will focus on this architecture and uh, show you how it can perform. Uh, these are just some cool images of the devices that we can, uh, we can fabricate. We do everything in-house at uh, ID Quantique. So you can see a wafer which has very different uh, designs. And these are some multi-pixels um, that I've shown right now. So once you package this detector, you can, uh, you can uh, wire bond it, and then you can couple light. This is a ferrule of a single mode fiber. And the detector then sits at the center of the ferrule in order to efficiently collect the light from a single mode fiber. So you can see the area of the, the, the diameter of the detector is even less than 16 micron. And uh, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see some of the feature of this detector. So these pixels that I've described, and you can see here in this recolored image, they are arranged in this interleaved geometry. So they're always kind of following each other. And this allows to have a uniform light distribution on the array. So all the pixels will have the same probability of absorbing an incoming photon. The nanowires are, of course, shorter because they cover the same area of a single pixel, but now with 14 smaller pixels. And this allows them to have a lower recovery time. And as I mentioned, they are biased and read out individually, which allows us to achieve the highest possible detection rates. For these devices, we use, the, we use NBTIN as a superconducting material, which also gives us uh, the best jitter that we can achieve and limits the crosstalk between two nanowires that are next to each other. And moreover, we are still using one single fiber. So if you have a, a setup and you want to work really fast, you don't need to use to split your optical signal into multiple detectors because basically you are taking advantage of this spatial multiplexing that you have on this detector. So let's look uh, how we characterize this detector. So the first thing we want to look at is what efficiency can we get. And because we have access to each pixel, we can measure the efficiency of each single pixel. So in this graph, you see the pixel efficiency versus the bias current. So these are 14 traces, one for each pixel. So you can see we have an average pixel efficiency of around 6.4%. We have a, a very nice plateau region, which gives us a region, as you see, where a change in bias current does not affect the efficiency of the pixel. This is great, so you can bias your detector anywhere here. You don't have to worry about fluctuations in the bias current uh, influencing the efficiency of your detector. Um, you see there is a quite uniform distribution among the pixel. And this difference that you see between these two sets, it's because uh, the, the light in this particular device, the fiber, was slightly misaligned towards one side of the detector. So the pixel on the right side or the left, they experienced slightly different absorption probabilities. But as you can see, it's a very minor difference. And if you, if you make the sum of all these efficiency, efficiencies, you would expect this device to operate at around 90% single photon efficiency, which we have then demonstrated with an actual measurement on the entire detector. We also looked uh, carefully at the pixel recovery time in order to understand how fast the detector can perform. And you see this measurement, I find it very interesting because it's really a measurement in time. So you see time between consecutive counts of how the efficiency of a pixel can recover after a single photon detection. So after a single photon detection, your nanowire will be unable to detect any photon for a really short amount of time. But then as the nanowire is cooling down again, the current starts to flow back in the detector and the, and the nanowire can be back at full efficiency 
after well, around 8 nanoseconds, but it's back at 90% of the maximum efficiency after only 6 nanoseconds. And while this, is, this might be happening in one of, your, of our nanowires, you still have 13 other nanowires that are ready to detect new photons. So even if your second photon is arriving here, provided that you are lucky that it's not arriving on the same wire that just received the previous one, you can have another single photon detection. And yeah, this points to the possibility to achieve ultra high detection rates. We characterize the jitter of the detectors. We did it at low count rates, so you can see at 15 mega counts per second. We achieve 21 picosecond jitter at full width half maximum. And we also studied how this jitter is evolving when there is an increase in the, in the detection rate. So this is actually the, um, the, by, the point at which the detector was operated in the QKD experiment that I will show briefly later and that uh, Rebecca presented on, uh, on Tuesday. And it's also great that all the pixels are very uniform, so it really, this detector really performs as one detector, even if it's composed of 14 individual elements. So now that the performances of each pixel have been carefully analyzed, what we will do, we can bias all the pixel and then study the performances of the entire array. And the way we do it is by looking at, uh, at this curve, which shows you how the efficiency of the detector varies according to the detection rate. And I think this is the most fair measurement of the actual speed of a detector. So we are illuminating the detector with CW, so we're not fixing the inter-arrival time between the photons, and looking how the efficiency varies. So what we can see, we can see for low count rates, so below 20 mega counts per second, we measure 90% efficiency, which is, uh, we, were, we were, let's say, happy to see that it's the same value that we had projected from the measurements on the single pixel. And we are able to keep this efficiency above 80% until 400 mega counts per second. But then as you increase the detection rate, the, the efficiency eventually starts to drop because the recovery time of each pixel starts to matter. So you start to have a non-negligible probability that a photon will be arriving on a detector that it's still recovering. So you see the efficiency starts to drop. However, we can still achieve a counting rate of 1.5 gigacounts per second with 50% absolute uh, efficiency. And um, so this is, I think it's one of the fastest SNSPD that's been uh, reported. And it, um, it played a key role in enabling the results that, uh, that Rebecca presented on Tuesday, where at University of Geneva, using a simplified BB84 protocol and the QKD system of University of Geneva, coupled with the multi-pixel SNSPD developed, we achieved a key rate of 64 megabit per second over 10 kilometers of fiber. And moreover, this detector can also provide, uh, uh, can also improve your resilience against blinding attacks because you have the option of monitoring the coincidence between the clicks of the pixel, and this will give you more information about the, po the possibility of some eavesdropper trying to attack your, your system. Um, I will switch now to the study of the photon number resolving capabilities of this array. And there are two problems that you might be interested in uh, solving when looking at these properties. So you, you might want, I mean, you, you probably want to link the statistics that you are recording, so the counting statistics, to a certain inputs, number of photon inputs at the, um, at the input of your detector. And the relationship between uh, this photon state uh, and uh, the counts is obviously determined by your detector. And this is a matrix that describes the operation of your detector uh, while responding to a multiple photon um, absorption. So we've worked out how to characterize these numbers. It's an easy combinatorial problem if the light is, is uniformly distributed among the pixel. And once all the elements of this matrix, matrix can be retrieved, we can basically shine uh, some unknown light to our detector and reconstruct the state that we were sending. Well, in this case, we knew that we were sending Poissonian light. We were setting a certain mu 
but then we were verifying by reconstructing and fitting the counting statistics of our detector that we could indeed retrieve the mu that we were sending to the detector. So once you have done this and you've characterized the detector and you've proven that these elements are correct, then there is no limitation on the light that you can send to the detector and you can still study the light distribution. And there is an even harder problem that you can solve, which is if you want to know single shot in a certain amount of time, how many photons were impinging on your detector. And for that, uh, we refer to as single shot fidelities, basically as the diagonal elements of this matrix. So you can see that the one photon fidelity, P11, it's the single photon efficiency that I showed you in the previous graphs. But then we can start speaking about a two photon fidelity, a three photon fidelity. And these, these numbers are extremely important for people that are working for Gaussian boson sampling or optical quantum computing, because at the end, this probability of correctly identifying a photon number state will, uh, will impact the errors that they can get in, the, in their uh, experiments. And um, moreover, as I mentioned, this detector is able to work with photon with long coherence time. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm sending a picosecond pulse laser, and I'm uh, reconstructing the state that was incoming on the detector. But with this detector, we can also work with uh, longer light pulses. So we can kind of simulate operation with uh, light coming from cavity sources, uh, squeezed light, and light that is generally possibly needed for some protocols with quantum repeaters or to interface with atomic quantum memories that require photons with a very narrow bandwidth and so a long coherence time. And we proved that this can work up to a, even with a 10 nanosecond light pulse, we are correctly reconstructing the incoming state up to also quite high mean photon numbers. Uh, this brings me to my conclusion. So I've showed you the performances of these ultra fast multi-pixel SNSPDs that's able to count at 1.5 giga counts per second with 50% absolute efficiency. And it was used in uh, the record-breaking uh, QKD experiment where we showed 63 megabit per second over 10 kilometers of fiber. Moreover, I've shown you how the detector is capable of uh, correctly identifying the photon number state for photon with long coherence time, and how it shows a two-photon fidelity of 75%. Future direction for our work would be to focus on uh, increasing the number of pixels in this type of detectors. But then we will need to put a lot of work into studying, into developing a readout electronic that can be integrated very close to the detector because you cannot run 1,000 cable on a 1 or 2 Kelvin cryostat. So this would be a huge step for the technology of SNSPD to be able to have something as closely coupled to the detector as possible that can digitize the signal, merge them, and we can drastically reduce the um, output coaxial lines that are needed to read the pixels. And with this, I want to thank uh, all the people that worked on this project. I want to thank uh, some of the funding agencies that have supported us. Of course, I want to thank you all for your attention, and I will be very happy to reply your questions. Thank you. So thanks a lot. There's already first question. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, thanks. Just a quick question: uh, What's the highest number of uh, photons that you can resolve with a uh, photon number resolving detectors? Yeah. So the highest number of photons will be limited by the number of pixels. So no more than 14. But then, what's the probability that you send 14 photons and they split one for each pixel? So basically, from uh, from this matrix, I, I mean, I, I in the, if you look at our paper, there is the full uh, the full matrix. So as you see, these probabilities are going, uh, they're going down pretty fast. So you can, uh, you can compute them so you can know, let's say, if your application really requires a certain probability for a five photon event, you can compute, I'm going to need a detector with this geometry with, I don't know, 20 pixels and uh, 
95% efficiency at single photon level. Because all these numbers depend both on the efficiency of a single pixel and on the number of pixels. So it's, uh, we, for this detector, as you can see, like I, I have a four photon fidelity of 40%, and I think already for five is below 20. It drops pretty fast. And do you have any detectors that are higher than 14 pixels at the moment, or is that just... So, our cryostats have a 16 channel maximum. So if we would make more than 16 channels, we would need to kind of develop some sort of scheme to combine a few pixels together before reading them out. But uh, we could make more than 16 pixels on the other type of uh, geometry that I've shown, the parallel ones. So then you could get more pixels, you could get higher fidelities, but you wouldn't be able to go as fast. So there's, there's always some kind of trade-off. Okay. Thanks. There was another question. Uh, hi. I read that uh, there's some amount of discrimination ability with a single photon SNSPD just based on like the electrical response. Yeah. Is there any possibility of, of sort of merging the two approaches and, and kind of taking the best of both worlds using all the information? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, yes. So you would need to change a little bit the, the readout. Usually those implementations require this taper structure to match the impedance of the nanowire with the 50 ohm. Mm. But you could definitely think of having a detector like this where each wire has this taper thing. You would, you would have to then uh, change a little bit the way you are post-processing the signals because then uh, the, when you do that, those schemes, the difference in one or two photon comes out of the slope of your signal. So two photon event will kind of arrive a little bit sooner. I see. And maybe have a slightly higher amplitude. But so you'll need to like merge two things, but it could definitely be an interesting prospect. Thank you. Especially for that scheme is best for distinguishing one versus more than one. You apply that to all of these pixels and you would get some big improvements. There was one question over there in the back. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, so I was just wondering, what's the off how, how big are the off-diagonal elements of this matrix? Sorry? Of, uh, how big are the off-diagonal uh, elements of the yeah. PNR matrix? So what well, you can expect that uh, every, um, when we calculate this, we assume, uh, because the dark counts of these detectors are below 100 counts per second, so we assume that you'd, the, the elements uh, that are below the diagonal are zero, so if you send two photons, you're not going to get three clicks. And then each column sums to one. So basically, if I show you this 74%, this extra probability will be distributed between having only one click. So mistaken, you mistake two photons for one, or you even miss both of them, because at the end, one pixel has a 90, the, the total of detection is 90%. So there is a zero, there is a probability of missing both. So they are distributed like this. Thanks. No problem. Some further question? If not so. Oh, yeah. One, one last question. Hi. Um, so if I understood the, the thing correctly, um, at any given point, one of, you will have a detection from one of the pixels while the other pixels are still available. So uh, after a detection, um, only 13 pixels will be available uh, for some time. Uh, this somehow introduces um, correlations between the um, uh, detection efficiency of your entire detector and the counts that you're getting. Do you expect any security loophole that can um, arise from this? So th there is probably like this is something that could be studied more in details. Uh, I know there is this, uh, um, this paper here that I'm citing that was looking how actually these architectures are improving mm -hmm. this, um, the resistance to some attacks because you can look if there are like, you know, always five pixels clicking at the same time and you're trying to send single photons in your QKD, it gets kind of weird. But maybe there is more uh, interesting research that can go on in this. So, it's possibly interesting to explore. 
or you just go to 1,000 pixels and there is no problem since the, it's, it's a very small difference in uh, detection efficiency. There will be many other problems, but definitely that one might be solved.